You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Shalom. It's me. Are you coming home for Hanukkah? There's presents but no tree. I'll make latkes gluten-free. Yes, you slept here for Thanksgiving, but it's time for dreidels. Shalom. It's your mother. Someday when you have some kids yourself, you'll have some sympathy. Hello and welcome to Shalom Hartford. Many of you know Patty Weiss Levy because of her very popular blog, NiceJewishMom.com. But did you know that she was nominated for two Pulitzer Prizes? Did you know that she worked for USA Today as a fashion writer? Did you know that she worked for the Sunday Magazine for the Hartford Current? Did I mention that she was also a coach for her daughter's soccer team? I'm Pat Kazakoff. You're watching Shalom Hartford. Stay with me, and we're going to meet this nice Jewish mom.com, Patty Weiss Levy. That's quite a career. You think? I think, I think. <laughs> Let's talk about the Pulitzer Prizes. What were the stories that led you to that? I was nominated for two years in a row. One year was for investigative reporting and the following year for feature writing, but they were both for a series of stories about colonial realty, which was the biggest real estate scandal in Connecticut history. A lot of people lost almost all their money, I guess. That and was the story that Frank Shook shook the books? Basically, it was a sad thing and he did end up taking his life and I was one of the last people who spoke to him probably in terms of, you know, I, I interviewed him, yes. I worked on that story for a very long time. I did nothing but investigate colonial realty and, and, and um, that's, they were both related to that. And what about you became, you were a fashion writer for USA Today. That's pretty heady. Well, um, how, did that, how did that happen? Well, there I was, a nice young, nice Jewish girl in New York City, and I met my husband on Valentine's Day in 1982. God knows why a man in West Hartford would have to go to New York to find a nice Jewish girl, but he did, mm -hmm. my great fortune, I guess. He was a reporter at Channel 30 here on the NBC affiliate, and I ended up wanting to be in the same city after a short time, we became engaged very, very quickly. You were in love? Yes. Okay. Um, and he, um, he had lived in Washington, D.C. before, and USA Today had just started, and I got the job. And I lived there for about a year and wanted to get married, and I came up here, and I have lived here ever since. I hate to count how many <laughs> decades, but <laughs> Well, you I know am. what? You talk about getting the job, and you know, you, you hear about the malaise of young people. They can't do what they want. They can't get a job. You do. Yes, you do hear about that. How did you get such a high-profile job at such a young age? Actually, I was pretty young when I started off. I know that college kids today often end up moving back into their parents' house after college. That was not going to be for me. I set my sights on finding a job immediately after I graduated from Brandeis, and I was an English major, and I decided that I was going to take the best job that I could find within the first two weeks, and that was that. I was very motivated. I went to New York. I ended up getting a job at CBS Publications. It had a lot of magazines. The thing that attracted me to it is I think if you started a large company, there is more room for mobility. They had a rule at the company. After six months, you could apply for any job that was available, including, I assume, like wife of the CEO, which you know would have interested <laughs> me also probably. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was there for six months as the assistant to the, the book manufacturing um, manager. 
which wasn't really leading me anywhere. But after the six months, I ended up getting a job at Field and Stream magazine. Field and Stream. Well, that's quite a difference. It wasn't quite as far a field for me as you might imagine, because I grew up going fishing with my family. My father was an avid fisherman, and I knew my way around, um, you know, a, a fishing rod and a lure. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I lasted there for another year. Then I got a job at New York Magazine. I was 23 at the time. I was an editorial assistant, and then I became an assistant editor. So when you say you got a job, I mean, that's what people are interested in. Like, how did you get that job? Did you send them? Uh, did, you, did you write a story? Did you bang on doors? Like, why? how did you get that? I was still feeling very motivated, I guess, and ambitious. And I wrote a letter, and I sent it out to 40 of the top magazines in the city. And it was a cutesy little letter. It said something like, let me introduce you to a new product. She walks, she talks, she knows her way around a newsroom and she can cut your, your editorial time in half. And I touted my skills and they hired me within you know, a week or so. It was um, So was would you fortunate. recommend that young people do that now? Would that be something that you think, you know, like it was a little cutesy, it was a little different, it was a little avant-garde? Uh, my job there for the next four years was among many, many things that I hired the entire junior staff. And I can tell you right now that if you write a letter to somebody that shows some personality and not just starts off, hello, my name is X and I am enclosing my resume, everybody is doing that. Show a little bit of, you know, something unique about yourself. And it's a very competitive world, but go for it. From that, which is a very illustrious career, could be a little intimidating. I mentioned that you were a soccer coach for eight seasons. Yes. So how did we go from the Pulitzer Prize, the USA Today, to soccer coach? USA Today came right after New York Magazine. And then I was ready to get married and I came up to Hartford and I began to freelance for them writing about fashion at first and then I became an investigative reporter which led to the eventually the Pulitzer Prize nominations. I was at the Hartford Current for 12 years and during that time I often covered the fashion shows in New York covering, you know, Calvin Klein and Ralph Lauren and Bill Blass. It, it and, sounds and very glamorous. It, it, sound, it sounds wonderful. So it's a hard, the transition to soccer mom is difficult for me to get my hands around that. It was more difficult for me probably in certain ways. At the time, I had a three-year-old son. When I left, my daughter was five and my son was eight. And I had been working for th several years, quote unquote, part time there um, in order to have some flexibility to be at home with the kids after they got out of school. And there was a downsizing effort at the Hartford Current. They had to cut 30% of the staff. There were 10 people working at the Sunday Magazine. And I turned to my two best friends there. Who, one was my editor, the other was the design director. The three of us were working part time with small children at home. Part-time for a journalist, by the way, is, is at yes. least 40 hours a week, I hate to tell you. Yeah, no, no, I, um, I gathered as much. It's almost like being a doctor, except... Um, you know, <laughs> except you're a journalist. Except you're a journalist. <laughs> right. And um, I said to them, they have to cut three of us, it's going to be us. And they said, you're out of your mind. But I was very realistic. And the reason I mentioned to you the Pulitzer Prize nominations is I want it to be clear that I was not cut for any reason relating to my abilities or my output. The two years before, everything I had written had been nominated for a Pulitzer Prize and I was eliminated from my job. So from elimination, yes. we go to being a mother. I was exhausted at the time. It's very hard to do everything to the best of your abilities. And I am somebody, if I'm going to do anything, I want to do my best at it. Otherwise, why bother? And I felt like I was dropping things one end or the other. Mostly it had to be at home because as a journalist, you can't make a mistake. You can't make a mistake. All you have is, you know, your accuracy and your integrity. And, and so the kids were always saying to me, why are you always so tired? I wonder why I was so tired. I barely slept. 
And I thought at this point, I'm leaving my job. I'm going to stay home with him for six months and kind of recoup and be mommy. Let's fast forward a little bit. So how did it feel to come from the glam, it, it was a glamorous sort of heady life, and then you became a full-time mother. How does that feel? On the one hand, I absolutely loved it. I loved being there for the kids whatever they needed. I was the mom who went on every field trip for both of them. I did all of those field trips twice because I did it for one kid and then I did it for the other. I was not only at every soccer game or basketball game or whatever, but um, as I told you, I coached my daughter's girls soccer team for eight seasons. So I was, did you love it the same way you loved the other life? I loved coaching. I was not a great soccer player. In fact, I wrote a story for the Hartford Current before that. I, I learned how to play soccer at the age of 40. I joined a women's team. I'd never been on a team before. I loved being on a team. I eventually stopped playing because sometimes one of my kids would have a game and you don't want to say, mommy has a game, mommy's not coming so to your I'm game. So what I'm hearing was that you loved the lifestyle. You loved being a mother. You loved everything that went with it. I did. and. I got to hear what was happening with my kids. I was the one who picked everybody up and took them to their after school activities, their friends as well as them. So let's fast forward to NiceJewishMom.com. How did that happen? Well, here's the thing. When you live in a place like West Hartford, you know almost everybody. You certainly know all the Jews. Every time you go into the Crown supermarket, you see somebody that you know, if not, you know, 30 people. And people always come over and say, so, you know, what's happening? What are you up to? And the fact is you always answer when you're a stay-at-home mom, you, you tell them what your kids are up to, because what are you up to? You are up to your kids. And I love being home with my kids, but eventually my kids were no longer home with me. One went to college, the other went to college, mm -hmm. then they graduated from college. Now what, what the heck am I doing? It became ridiculous. I, I was still talking to them. What are cell phones for? Eventually, I realized I had to do something. And the problem was not that there was nothing I wanted to do. The problem for me was that there were so many things I wanted to do that I'd always wanted to do, and I wanted to do them now, but I didn't know which direction to go in. And I sat down and I made a list of all of these things. I wanted to write a novel, but I wanted to write a nonfiction book, but I wanted to write a play, and maybe I'd write a screenplay, mm -hmm. and maybe I'd start a catering business, you know, nice Jewish mom, you know, cooking soup or whatever. I make a very nice uh, matzo ball soup. Did I mention that? Well, you're well, mentioning it you know, if you want now. the recipe, you know where to look. It's <laughs> right. on my blog. Also the latkes and, you know, the, the brisket that's there too, and the humantaschen. Anyway, I sat down and I made a list of all the things I wanted to do. One of the things on the list was to write a blog because that had become very popular. And I looked at the list and I realized that of all the things on the list, there was only one thing I could start doing right away without any investment of money, without anybody else's approval or input, or I had to submit something, I had to get an agent, I had to get a book contract. I could start writing a blog instantly. and. I think sometimes when you set your mind to do something, you have to do it right away before you lose your motivation. It doesn't stay forever. And I started it that day. I started it on Tuesday and by Friday, I had a blog. I had nicejewishmom.com. It wasn't just that I had nicejewishmom.com though. This is the thing. I was nicejewishmom.com. I think for 20 years, or staying home with my kids, well, at that point it was 15 years. I had been freelancing for a while for the Sunday Connecticut section of the New York Times. It wasn't just that I was writing nicejewishmom.com. I was nicejewishmom.com. So I, let me, I'm interested in that. Yes. I know you're nice, because I can see it, and I know you're a mom, but how important was the Jewish piece to you? Like, why did you include Jewish in there? Why was that so important? It's an interesting question. My background, Are you religious? My background is as a Reformed Jew, and there are people who are much more observant who may not think that Reformed Jews are quite as Jewish. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, when you grew up, you know, with parents who grew up in Brooklyn, being a Jew isn't just 
keeping kosher. Of course, that is important. I will admit, I'll be the first to admit that I don't keep kosher. It's a mindset, it's a culture, it's an entire way of being. And I have been astonished. As much as I came up with the name and I thought it was cute, the fact is everything that I write about and everything that I do is impacted and you know, affected by my Jewishness, and it comes up naturally. So you see the world through a Jewish lens, and because you're a journalist, perhaps you're more conscious of it than most people. Could that be? No, it's because I'm a Jew. <laughs> Just because you're a Jew, and you feel Jewish. I feel very Jewish, and you know, part of it was that you know, growing up, if you start to tell my parents or grandparents a story, they would interrupt you in about 10 seconds because they just wanted to make sure that everybody in the story was Jewish. If they weren't Jewish, you know, they were a little less interested. I'm sorry that that is, that is the truth. Have but you taken this sort of philosophy of life? It's, it's, not a, it's a little unusual, this philosophy. Have you taken this philosophy and given it to your children? Do you think they have that philosophy? My children are both Jewish. My children are educated Jews. They went to Solomon Schechter Day School. They both were bar mitzvahed and confirmed at Congregation Beth Israel. My children are out in the world and to be honest they are both seriously involved. Uh, my son is getting married to a girl who is not Jewish. And Mazel tov. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Lovely girl. And my daughter has a serious boyfriend also not Jewish. Let's talk about the blog a little bit. Okay. So how do, you, how do you feel writing the blog? Like, does that give you what you need? Is that as fulfilling as your career before? Is it more fulfilling? The fact is, all those years that I was writing about other people, I really had my own stories to tell, and I was ready to tell them. And now I get to do that. And not only do I get to do that, but I get to do whatever I want, to write it at any length I want. Is that important that you don't have anybody editing you and telling you what to do? Is that important for Patty Weiss Levy? Everybody needs an editor, they say. Um, I happen to be my own. I'm also my own art department and photographer and, um, you know, marketing person. I'm not so good at the marketing. but. Um, but the fact is that when you are a journalist, I was writing for many years for the Connecticut section of the New York Times. And every time I submitted a story idea for, to them, they would say, that's interesting, but that's not really what we want. Why don't you write about this? And it was always something that had absolutely no interest to me other than the time that I was assigned to spend a day with Gloria Steinem. That was interesting. I realized that if you're excited about something, you can write a good story about it. And I'm excited about my children and I write about my life with them. We've gone through three iterations of Patty Weiss Levy. We had the, the big career and then we had the mother and now we have the NiceJewishMom.com. What's next in store for NiceJewishGrandma.com? Let's but not get ahead of her. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> okay, NiceJewishGrandma.com. <laughs> One thing at a time. But what would you advise other women, other mothers who, you know, they they went to a fancy college, they got a fancy degree, they had a career, they were a mother, and now they're at loose ends. What would you tell them to do? You know, I read a quote the other day from that nice Jewish mom, um, Elizabeth Taylor. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, th I don't know if she was Jewish by birth or Jewish by marriage, but she was a Jew. And she said, it isn't in the having, it's in the getting. No, yes, that's what she said. And I say it's in the doing. And I wasn't happy doing nothing. One day melted into another. I couldn't tell them apart. I think that you have to do something. It doesn't matter what you do, and it doesn't matter how much you're paid for it. Men often ask me about my blog immediately, like, how do you monetize that? Mm -hmm. I haven't figured it out yet, but, but the fact is, what would be better than having a job that you would do for nothing because you love it so much? And I guess that's what I have. I have been doing it for five and a half years every week and I get up and I want to do it and I feel fulfilled by that. I feel productive. I feel that I am contributing something. I have 2,000 readers all around the world. I don't know who most of them are but they must be getting something out of it because they continue to read it and, and so I say whatever it is, 
that you've always wanted to do or you're good at, if you can find a way to do it, do it and do it now. So just like Nike says, just do it. Do it. Is there anything else you want to say to me, Patty, that you haven't said to me? You know, guilt is something that we all have. I'm sorry that my children have it about the fact that I chose to stay home with them. I don't understand that because I was happy to stay home with them and I'm happy to write about them now. Sometimes I feel guilty about that. I try not to, to spill too many of their secrets, but if you want to know, it's on nicejewishmom.com. Is there something you want to give me? You mentioned to me that you wanted well, to give me something. funny that you should mention that. I have an award that I give out on nicejewishmom.com. It is my nicejewishmom.com spiel of approval. I tried it. I liked it. Well, I like this show. I think you're doing a great job, and I am giving my spiel of approval to Shalom Hartford. Oh, very. has a cough. I'm very, very pleased. We've been talking to Patty Weiss-Levy. She seems to be having a great life. She is truly a nice Jewish mom. Dot 